nanosa mane sateya mane ni anani ananosa la baso ya ya e ayana ni ananosa de casa barosa ni nanosa manosa e kingdom come kingdom come kingdom come thy will be done is the life that flows from the throne of grace true nobility in life is knowing the lord and walking in his way the most glorious pursuit of mankind is walking in god's image and likeness it is our utmost desire that you will be richly blessed as you listen to this message from living school ministry aka if the bible network for more life transforming messages Please visit www.livingschoolministry.org. Is the light that flows from the throne of grace. Here it is the golden holy fire fall upon my heart. Holy fire, holy fire.
The only limitation man has is the limitation of faith and obedience. We are only limited by our faith and our obedience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Obedience is a tutelage. If the Son of God will learn obedience, if the Son of God will learn obedience, thank you. Thank you. If I am all of Praise the Lord. Listen. Listen. Only one thing to, to underscore the importance of this thing. Because this is the biggest, this is the biggest thing in the life of man. And then extremely the most difficult. Jesus did not learn obedience by being taught. Even the Son of God on earth will learn obedience by suffering. He didn't learn obedience by tutelage. Say, okay, they, they taught you. They, maybe they teach you. They only go say, they say, he had to learn it by what? There is something about the nature of man and obedience. Obedience. We can do everything, but we will not obey. Yes, we we'll do it. But that thing called obedience will not obey. Say, the Son of God learned obedience by what? By what? That is heavy. That is too weighty. Praise the Lord. That is too weighty. He said he learned obedience by what? By suffering. For him to obey and do the work of redemption. And then some of us maybe want to learn it by uh, sitting down in a very comfortable zone. Praise the Lord. Just sit down in a very comfortable zone. Just sit down and confess uh, the word of God. Just speak in tongues. Speak in tongues and confess the word of God and get through by and by. Can we echo it together? Obedience comes by tutelage. Obedience comes by tutelage. You have to be taught obedience. You have to be taught obedience. Please you can sit down. You see, if you look at uh, from the very beginning and uh, after everything was done and finished, good word, beautiful word, and then uh, everything was there. You see, when God had made everything, had completed everything for man, that's in the natural, that this can take man, everything in the natural, then God now came and then wanted to initiate this most important aspect of the life of man. Praise the Lord. God now came and wanted to start, start and initiate this most important aspect of the life of man. God now wanted to start teaching man obedience. He wanted to start teaching man faith. Now every other thing there is there, everything. Does, does he need faith in that word? Eh? Not this now that he needs faith for money. I mean, he needs faith for this one. He doesn't need faith. Praise the Lord. What God has created and established, in, uh, man doesn't need faith. Because it, the, uh, the word, there was no sin in the word, everything was just okay. Praise the Lord. Then God now came and now began to introduce what? Faith. And how did he do it? What does it make sense? They are, you should eat this tree, Abby. Don't eat this tree. Praise the Lord. You know, God even made the case for obedience very difficult. There was no explanation. You know, the nature of man, what you don't understand, you start permutating and you just even trivialize it. He just came. Don't eat this fruit, right? Eat, don't eat this particular one. Eat this other. Eat this one, but this one, don't eat it. Why should he not eat it? He said, in the day that you are going to eat it, you what? That the man does not know death. He has not seen death. Death, he, death, he, he doesn't know death. Are you, are you with me? So he doesn't understand what God was saying. And that is where God was trying to switch on the fountain of what? Faith, you follow beyond understanding. It's only faith that makes you follow what? Beyond what? Understanding. Is it to do what you understand? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are we together? Yes, so he said, in the day you eat it, you will surely what? Yeah. Uh, in that world, what is death? As far as that world was, uh, uh, what, that world, death was not existing. Praise the Lord. And then God expected him to what? 
So he said, okay, he doesn't know. So it's easy to go and take it and eat it now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Not now that you already know what is called death. You know, you know, you know death now, right? You know death in all those things. They don't know it. But God was trying to introduce man to faith. The faith life. And the one, the, when the first introduction man failed. You see this faith uh, life and faith work. I was trying to introduce him to the faith life. And for that faith life, you will now introduce him to other things that is bigger. So the first introduction of faith to man, man fell. That lesson, that important lesson. And which is the ultimately the life of man before what? God. So don't forget, you see, that's why I take time a lot to teach us about the beginning. You know, the two life in the beginning. When God made the natural, the physical world, man could interact with that world. Now for man to now relate with God, man needs to relate with God by what? By what? Because he doesn't understand God. God is uncreated. He is created. Can you see? So the only foundation, the only basis for that relationship has to be faith. And the man does not know faith. And he has to be taught faith. And so the first introduction to faith, what? He fell. And then Jesus came and restarted that lesson. God even restarted with pockets of lesson with Abraham. Go to the land that I wish. Go depart and go to the land that I wish. A land that flows with what? Just leave your father's land. A land that we what? That we what? He didn't show him. He said, are we what? I will show you. Ah. What if they go there? There is no land to come. The many what is will come, but the man stepped out and then took that step. He didn't know where he was going. He didn't understand that instruction, but the man what? He went. Now go back to Adam. They didn't understand that instruction, but they couldn't follow. Can you see? See the most important. So don't forget that when all the things that God created, man understood them, right? So he could relate with them. He doesn't need faith in that world. I said it again. He doesn't need what? Faith in that world. Everything was there now. What was lacking? To pay school fee. Eh? Damn it. To pay school fee here, you need what? To pay house rent, Abby? Or to own a house, you need what? Sometimes for transport. Eh? What you must see? Eh? You need what? Sometimes to eat food. You need what? All those things were not easy. I say he doesn't need what? Faith. So, God now came. But because everything was there, everything was supplied, he understood everything. You know, he, God already gave him a spirit of mastery and dominion, right? Have dominion. So, in that spirit, you know, in that spirit is embedded dominion and is a mastery. So, over there. Then, then, this is the aspect he doesn't know. Now, this is God now. Now, God did not just create man for the earth. God also created man to relate with what? With him. And in relating with God, that relationship can only be on one foundation. The foundation of what? Hey, because man does not understand God. God is way, way bigger. God is uncreated. Man is what? Created. Who God is in the spirit. So he need, that journey, he cannot begin that journey without faith. It's only faith that can, that can initiate that journey. And then here, is, here, here was God trying to teach man and to initiate man on that journey to begin to know him. And to begin to relate and to work with him. And then God started with the tutelage of what? Faith. And I said, what happened? What happened? At the very first introduction to faith, like what happened? Man fell. Man fell. You see, the just shall live by what? Faith. So you can begin to see scriptures, scriptures like that. Then I said, the, look at it again. Abraham is the father of what? You see, as if like the others that live before God, you know, stop. But in Abraham was highlighted this God. God took his time, took detail to to highlight this faith life. Look at this, look at the life of Abraham. From one journey of faith to what? He just kept full all the life of Abraham, he never understood what was happening to him. God said that the seed of Abraham. Later they told us that seed was Christ. How will you understand Christ that time? God was talking about seed, he didn't understand that seed. You know, in your seed shall all the families of the blessed be birth. He said uh, he took on the seed when he came to he took on the he did not take on the nation of angel, he took on the seed of what? Abraham, the Christ. Look at that time. God was talking to Abraham about it. How will you understand it? But he expected Abraham to join it by what? Are you in a situation that a lot of things happen around you, you don't even understand? Your life, all calculations, everything like to calculate, all parameters, things are just going like you don't understand. Amen? Can you join it further? Faith. What is just faith now? If God just expects man from the very beginning to just believe his personality. You know, I cannot do you harm. 
I can only lead you to what? To an expected what? End. Just look at faith. Just beyond believing in his word. Believing in his word, the one that is speaking. Sometimes there's a faith that just holds his word, right? You want to trade and transact with his word. Amen. Satan can easily collect that one from you. This one, even when you don't understand, you know, his person. Like uh, this uh, iconic statement I, I, I had one day when I was watching a movie. You see, the man was telling the other person that if you don't understand his what, if you don't understand his what, his ways, he said, trust his hands. Mm. Praise the Lord. Say, if you don't understand his ways, right? Mm. Just trust his hands. Mm. The hand that leads you. Praise the Lord. Yes. The hand that what? Yes. That leads you. These were the same hand. Those guys, those men, during the days of Daniel, they trusted their hands, right? Yes, they were heading toward the fire, right? Did they understand what was happening? Mm. They didn't. But they just trusted what? He said, even God is able to, even if he does not what? They just trusted those hands. So even if he does not deliver us, they saw the fire, but when they entered into that fire, it became paradise. Mm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sometimes you see fire. This is what you are seeing, right? This is what your understanding is telling you. Can you, can, if that hand is leading you, can you step in? Mm. That's why it brings a lady, say, I cannot marry this lady. Right? Amen. He brings a guy and says, I cannot marry this guy. Can you just trust the hand that leads us? So we we'll go to, right? We say that that lesson was uh, for the entire humanity. Those, before Abraham, those men demonstrated faith, uh, Enoch, and he set a pocket of them, but to, to like uh, a, global, uh, a global instruction about faith. Like that, uh, somehow, you know, in the will and mind of God, it was Abraham that was used to illustrate it. Mm-hmm. Look at the life of that man. Praise the Lord. He said, depart from a land. The land that, how did he start that instruction? He said, leave your father's house, right? Yes. To a land that I will do what? I will show you. Imagine that kind of instruction. Eh? Praise the Lord. Just, no, imagine that kind of instruction. That will be what? So where, what is the foundation of faith now? In the faith, it's in the person that is speaking. I'm showing you two variations of faith. Too. You know, you can just faith in his word, right? And then faith in what? In his person. Of course, the word of God is himself, right? But he gives you a particular instruction. Okay, God has spoken this thing to me. Even when you are holding that word and you are not understanding that word, it is expected that faith will journey further into the person that spoke that word. Abraham, the land I will show you, he went there again, all kinds of other instructions were just coming. Things that he did not understand until that instruction came that go and sacrifice what? God had just told that will make you a father of many nations, right? Mm-hmm. When he gave him that promise, no child bet, the child did not come. He has left his father, you know, this one will make you a friend that God has obeyed you, you know? You turn into an instrument of fight. <laughs> you told me I have obeyed you, I have do your own part. You cannot be a liar. You know how kinds of you know, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He has left his father's house. He has left everywhere now, right? I give me my shout now. The man still continued to join him. Is he faith? Did you understand? If you go by take yourself to become my brand, can you understand? But the man continued to join him. Praise the Lord. And then I'll make you a father of many nations. One time I say, okay, change your name from Abraham. From Abraham to what? God is talking. Like, give me the shout. Be, he's having an encounter. What is difficult about giving me a shout, right? What is difficult? He's having an encounter. You do sacrifice. The, your descendants shall be this. You are talking. But where is the shout? But faith still continues to what? To join me. Praise the Lord. He said, okay, you are no longer Abraham, Abi. You are now the father of many nations. Uh, Abraham. You are now what? Abraham. The father of what? Of many nations. But yet, there was no shout. Praise the Lord. The man continued to do what? Faith continued to what? Faith continued to what? Journey. Was there understanding? No. Praise the Lord. Faith continued to journey. And then he said, I'll make you a father of many nations. And then finally, finally, 
the seed landed. Isaac. And then all of a sudden, one day, carry him and go and kill him. You know, we've got NASA asking questions. But you said, I'm, you know, you say I'm going to be the father of many nations. Now, I wait there for 25 years to have this one. Now, will I see now? How long will I wait to? I, am I going to have another child? All those analyses. Faith does not analyze. No, he has. He could just ask legitimate question, just genuine question. Okay, if I kill this one, okay, I don't have issue. I'm going to do it. You know, I'm going to do it. Not even but I'm going to do it. But you just want to understand. Amen. First to first of all, obey before you understand. In the military, they say obey before what? Complain. Complain. Abraham had question in his heart, but he kept it. Amen. Because the principle of faith must be understood. Obedience what? First. Before your question. Ah, I'm going to be the father of many nations. He awaited. He's 100 years old. At the time he took Isaac, now he's 100 and something years, right? Because Isaac was already a young boy. He could talk and engage the father, right? Where is the wood? Where is the sacrifice? This is the, the wood and where is the sacrifice, right? So Abraham had him at the age of 100. So this is 100 and something. And then you are not saying the should what? Sacrifice him. So how, how is the promise going to be? What will not happen? Can you see all of those back and forth questions? But faith continued to join him. Praise the Lord. And then he took him and put him uh, on the altar. I wanted, and took the knife and wanted to kill him. Praise the Lord. And God said, now I what? Now I what? He said, now I what? He said, now I what? God will only know you by your faith and obedience. Don't think you are a child of God. Ah, this one. Amen. God will know you by your what? I want to qualify that faith and obedience. By your present faith and obedience. He had obeyed. He left the land, right? He had left those one and everything, but he still continued the journey. Pre- yesterday, faith and obedience, and that's not what we're talking about. Because ob- faith and obedience is progression in the spirit realm. It's progression. He said, now I what? That means does it that God does not know before. The Bible says Jesus has all, all been obeying for the past 33 years. Right? Until he did that fight, that one, that when he say when he said having in readiness to punish all disobedience. When your obedience is what? Is complete. Obedience is a journey. And in that journey there's a completion. There's a completion. If, uh, Jesus said that uh, he obeyed Abi, he took on the he became a man, right? Even when he became a man, he became a servant, right? Those were, stage, those were obedience, right? He became a man. He, showed, he even agreed to come. Obedience. He came. He became a man. He grew. He made himself what? Of no reputation, right? He became a servant. And then he made himself to what? He chose to what? Die, Abby. And the death what? On the cross. The Bible said, and then what? What's the next thing? He said, dear what? Can you see the same statement with Abraham? He said, now I what? Now I know. And the Bible said, dear for God what? Exalted. When he became a man, had he been exalted? He said, uh, the Bible says uh, he became the author what? There was a statement before that time. What was the statement, Bible student? Hmm? Hebrews. Hmm? He became the author of what? Eternal salvation to all them that what? Obey him. Can you see? Before that statement, what was the statement before that time? Hebrew, you can open your Bible. Eh? He became the author of eternal salvation. Hebrews 5. Have you seen it? But hey, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made what? Perfect. He became the author of eternal salvation to all them who what? Being made perfect. What was that perfection? Was he imperfect before? No, he's having completed obedience. Say, being made what? Perfect. Was he imperfect before? Did he know sin? So what perfection is talking about? Have been completed what? Obedience. obedience. Have you been obeying? Can you, can you journey further? Can you still continue? In this massive journey of obedience. Because that is the life of man before God. Praise the Lord. The relationship between man and God is premised on that foundation. Faith presupposes obedience. That you what? You believe, right? That's it. That's it. That you what you believed, and you are taking step on your believing. So you can see the life of Abraham. That uh, lesson, that uh, the lesson he lost in uh, Adam, right? 
the most significant aspect of our life. Don't be carried away by those fine, fine, ah, you know, see these fine, fine things around you, see, and everything. The most important thing in that Genesis 1 and 2, in the life of man, was what was lost obedience. What came to to talk man, teach man obedience. Teach him faith. And then he lost it. Praise the Lord. No, the man didn't know anything called Injer. Even though he doesn't know Injer, Gabriel, Injer, Michael, all those, all those things that you know now. Amen. Timothy, you know better. <laughs> he didn't know all of those things. Praise the Lord. And he was not going to be seeing them like maybe he's going to see them. He so God expects that he's going to relate with them by what? Faith. Two, even there. Praise the Lord. So you see how massive this, uh, this lesson is. Obedience. Yeah, so. And I told us earlier before now that all that Jesus did, what he did on earth, he did what? Obey. Yeah, so. What are the big, big, mighty, something? No, he did what? The difference between Moses, Jesus and Moses is obedience. You obey. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sin is disobedience now, Abby. Yeah, yes, so any if you were born and you had you 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 if you were born during the time you were born up until now and you are a sinner, that means at one particular point you have done what? Apart from the fact that maybe you were okay in iniquity, did my mother what? Conceive me. But even as they give birth to you, you yourself did not do anything. At least to some extent. Mm. Uh-huh. There are certain things that will be credited. But you, all of us have done this something. Even when Jesus was a baby, he didn't lie. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, as a baby, now that who dropped this thing here? You are the one who says, It's not me, oh, two years old. You already started lying. Amen. Jesus did not lie. So, praise the Lord. So, what was the great sacrifice of Jesus on earth? What was it? Obedience. You obeyed God and obey to the cross. Mm. Obedience is not easy. It's easy to do many things. It's easy to do things. But it is not easy to obey. Mm. Because it will shake your comfort. Yes. Mm. Mm. Comfort. Mm. If I give an instruction now that, uh, Bola, this house, please, I'm going to clean everywhere. Everything. He will clean it. But if I ask him that, Bola, sit down there till I come back. Maybe I'm coming back in the evening. Mm. That's what I want. Mm. You see that one cleaning, he can do it. So long as he can do what he likes. You know, in that midst of doing it, he will do what he likes. Mm. But this one that sits down there, he cannot do what he likes, you know. Then, of course, you know, now he will just, you know, you can stand up quickly, mm-hmm. you know, and, and come back. He can, where he's seated, there, you may see a mosquito flying in that place. Oh, now you just go and kill that mosquito, you just go back and sit down. But I think not, I think not left that seat. It's easy to do things, but obedience is not easy. Mm. And that's why, no, that, that's why no lesser personality was given to teach us obedience than the Holy Spirit. Mm. These are not things that angels can teach you. This is beyond the realm of angels. Mm. There are aspects of our spiritual life and our work with God that angels come in. But this one is beyond them. Mm. Remember when God said, I'm going to send an angel. Even most of that time, he refused. Yes, sir. They don't send an angel with us. God told him that my name is in him. He will not even pardon your iniquity. Amen. Mm. Praise the Lord. Mm. He will not pardon your sin. Most you say no. You yourself will go with us. Mm. Remember when they told the, uh, give, uh, David options. Right? Choose men. Right? The sword of men. The what again? The sword of men, Abby. The plague, Abby. Plague now. Let the evil spirit come and deal with you. The disorder or the of or men, either men, evil spirit, or or God Himself. He said, Let me fall into what? Into the, hand of into the hands of God because so great are what? Is your mercy. There are things that only God can what? Can handle. Praise the Lord. So, what uh, are we saying uh, now that uh, the Holy Ghost that we receive, right? When it comes into your life, Praise the Lord. His most important work, yes, I dare to say it, is to tutor you what? Obedience. And I say, Jesus learned obedience by what? Eh? By what? We we'll tell you how difficult that terrain is by suffering. This was Jesus himself. His one was sinless. That had no sin. But to learn this thing, being in the, in the, in the human body, in the human flesh, he said he learned it by what? 
my son. Other things, maybe the maybe by the by the intuition of the spirit, by the the spirit, uh, maybe to the Holy Ghost tissue, you know, by revelation. You don't learn obedience by revelation. It's practical. It's what? Yes. If you don't know the pains of obedience, you cannot arrive at obedience. When you are tired sometimes and they are asking you to still pray. Are you no, so it, it legitimately you are tired. You've been walking all and everything. You think God looks at that one. He needed you that hour. And you must call. Whatever you need, he'll give you to you. If you need grace, he'll give you what? We will look, we'll be looking at our tired, but we'll not be looking at the grace that he can supply. Oh, I'm so tired. No, no, no. I'm so, you, you, just, you just submit and surrender to tiredness. But there is a grace in God. What? He said that you might be strengthened with might by his spirit. What? In the inner man. You see this thing called obedience. Obedience is not okay. Maybe we say uh, uh, all those uh, maybe But those, those, those things. He just needs you to pray. That hour. You just need your service in prayer. Is it sleep? Sometimes sleep itself will overwhelm us, right? You say, ah, no, today. <laughs> Man, no way, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, no way. <laughs> eh? No way. <laughs> eh? No way, amen. Yes, sometimes, eh, unconsciously, we know we have red lines. That the Holy Ghost will not cross. <laughs> Tomorrow can be back on track, but not today. <laughs> not today. Sleep. This sleep. <laughs> Even if they are trying to wake you, pull you out of that sleep. No way. You will just turn as if you did not hear. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> thank God. Thank God for the love of God. He said, Love covers what? Thank God the Holy Ghost is the spirit of love. You know how many of your transgressions he has covered? So that he can still walk with you. Then he said, Lord, cover the multitude of sin. In first person, you are the recipient from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Somebody is dying there and he needed your voice. You, you, you turn your back and okay, go and meet another person. Maybe he, gone, he has gone around like 19 persons. Maybe, maybe 20 people. The same reaction. Then the 21 person just struggle and manage to obey. Not that the person that obeyed the 21 person, maybe next month, that does not mean he will not be among the ones that he too will not go and do the same thing. No? You understand? Oh. <laughs> he just had the Holy Ghost was favored that day. That one responded. He just needed a voice and he started going around his sons. That no one that Paul wrote that where he's boasting, it is excluded. Then Jesus himself told us that after you have done the will of God, go and sit down. You are not prof- and you, sh- you should be the one to say that I am what? I am what? Unprofitable servant. We see the good works you are doing, but we don't see your struggle with the most high. We don't see the times and season you are frustrating, you are frustrating God. Abraham, depart from your father's land and go to a land I'll show you. That's the only thing you read. Do you know how long he has been speaking to him? Do you know? Love covers what? A multitude of what? Of errors. And sin. So God will cover it. God will not, God will not write it. You can't say, this Abraham, who I told him almost, in fact, almost 50 times before he obeyed me. You won't expect God to write something like that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So if you think you have arrived, and because of the anointing, right? You can arrive before men, but the most time knows you. This thing should keep us humble. I take it again. If the Son of God learned to be then by the things he suffered. Amen. You want to learn obedience inside the swimming pool. Eh? You are just swimming and enjoying yourself, you know. When the sun is up, let's go and swim. As you are swimming, you are learning obedience. It will rock you to your very foundation. So, can we take it together? Obedience is by tutelage. Again? You are hearing our voice? Obedience is by tutelage. 
by the tutelage of the Holy Spirit. He will teach you obedience. If only if he's coming to teach obedience by revelation, you are not going to hear. I want to tell you firsthand. You won't hear. To some extent, there are some you will hear, but you will hear. So you also use circumstances to teach you. Praise the Lord. He will use what? He will use circumstances also what? To teach you. Both positive and negative. Praise the Lord. You just cause certain things to just happen around you. Then, you know, there are something that when something negative happens to you, will not be humble. You know, you now sit and start thinking. And now start looking at where you have learned, you know. I, it has not happened to you before. Yes, eh? yes, when you hit the bottom rock, you now sit that. <laughs> you know, insanity will just come to you. You just reset. You know? But if that thing does not happen, you just keep busy. <laughs> no wish to, Like they say there, that the dog that wants to miss, Abby, will not hear the whistle of the hunter. But by the time a lion grows somewhere, he, run, he knows where the hunter is. So you see, your dog will come back and be waking the thing. <laughs> Sometimes God, God will just give you an encounter. All of what is he looking for? Don't be looking at that encounter. Be looking at what he wants to teach you. He wants to teach you that so that next time you what? You should obey. Can we say that obedience is a life in the spirit? And that life grows. So when we receive the Holy Ghost, thank God in the Holy Ghost there are, there's anointing, there are a lot of things there. Also in the Holy Ghost there is obedience. Praise the Lord. I remember the story of Kenneth E. Higgins. I know some of us will have read it in his book about one man of God that was heavily anointed. Right? Can't remember the name again. You know, was very anointed. And the man uh, had issue. Okay, thank you. And the man had issue with uh, food, Abby. Was it not food? He food, he was very fat, Abby. And then they were, he was now sick, they were now praying for him. And Kenneth Hagin said he was in the meeting, so they called ministers out to pray for the man of God. He was going and the Holy Ghost stopped him midway. He should go back. That the guy is very stubborn. I have warned him several, he refused to hear. He died at the age, before 40, Abby. I died at the age of 38, Abby. What's his name? Jack O. Okay. I, I read the story. He said, I've been warning him about food. But he's heavily anointed. He's healing anointing. That should be in the 40s, Abby. 1940s or thereabouts. Or 50s. Those healing uh, revival. Those voice of healing revival. Okay, 1950s, Abby. Okay. Praise the Lord. Can you see? He said, food. Eh? He said, I've been warning about what? Mm. Food. But you're not here. And then he became sick. Can we begin to bless our Father? So I want us to have the consciousness of obedience. The consciousness of obedience. And I say it's a life in the Spirit. Jesus obeyed until the death of the cross. Who knows the song? I could I Grandma, grandma is singing for us. Can we join her? <laughs> Okay, can you, okay. Okay, thank you, Grandma, for, for that song. Uh, the word of God, God, God is living. Uh, is living. Oh, no, 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 no,
or alone you find that it means the word of God doesn't change. Then I couldn't like it is like it is eternal. It's forever and ever the word of God is powerful, is living and is uh, it's forever and ever. So I, I I felt that she picked yes. some of those things in the spirit, yes. but she did, but that was how the, she just in that uh, song. Okay. Mm. Amen. Praise the Lord. No man can stop it. The word of God is living. The word of God is life, and the word of God is eternal. And then um, thank God for this, uh, this kind of uh, yes, you know, for this uh, prophetic voice that just came in, you know, to can join you with everything that we have been saying, since that your obedience can rest on what, on His word, right? Your obedience can what? Can rest on His word. Can you just bless Him once again? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Most High must be obeyed. There is no life outside of obedience. There is no life outside of what? Obedience. The whole structure of faith is built on obedience. Faith presupposes and connotes obedience. So they just shall live by faith. There is no faith without obedience. It is called faith because obedience is the heart of it. The just shall live by faith. This is the beauty of the human life. This is the beauty of humanity. Thank you. Remember the young rich ruler? He said he had done, you know, I told you, it's, it's easy to do every other thing. I have done everything, but he couldn't obey. You see, that the obedience. He couldn't obey. I have this one. I have done it. This one I have what done it. This one I have done. Okay, now say what? Jesus now came. Can you bless? Can you bless him? Can you just bless him? Can you just thank him? Can you just bless our Father? Just thank him. He says, the author of eternal salvation to all them that what? That obey him. I read that scripture. I say, uh, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 9. I say, be made perfect. I remember, what did I say? That, what did we say is that perfection? That when he has completed what? Obedience. And I told her, obedience is a journey what? In the spirit. It's a life what? In the spirit. And that life grows. So Jesus was made perfect. He was not imperfect before. He simply completed obedience. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation. Unto all them that what? What he perfected is obedience. So if he wants to give it to you, you must be obeying. He said he became the, being made perfect, having completed obedience. He now became the author of what? Eternal salvation. Unto all them that what? That obey him. Can you see it? And when the Holy Ghost comes, he starts teaching you what? Obedience. Can you bless him? These guys, this guy understood these things. Then, can I read Acts chapter 5 for us? When he, uh, Peter was talking about Jesus, he said, uh, The God of our fathers, Acts 5, verse 30 to 32. Say, The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and what? Hang on the tree. Him has God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. For to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. Verse 32, this is where we are coming. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God has given to them that what? Obey him. Them that obey him. Mm. 
Can you see? He said, God gave the Holy Ghost to them that what? Obey. To them that obey Him. You see why Adam could not have the Holy Ghost? Because they needed to obey. Of course, God was going to graduate them. Even when He created them in, Eden, in the Garden of Eden. He was going to graduate them and then give them the Holy Ghost. But they needed to obey. Praise the Lord. So the Holy Ghost is given to all them that what? Obey. obey Him. Jesus Himself is the author of eternal salvation to all them that what? Can you just bless Him and thank Him? As we receive strength and impartation for obedience, we round up with this song. We'll take it like two more times. The song we started with, Holy Fire, Fall Upon My Altar. And, and Sister uh, Elimon. And we say that altar is the altar of what? Obedience. obedience. You know? That altar is the life of obedience. Holy Fire, Fall Upon What? My Altar. Amen. Whatever it takes that I will be. I will be. Amen. Yes. Whatever it takes, if you give me cold water, if it's hot water that will make me to obey, let it be so. Whatever it takes, that obedience, that I will be growing, I will be learning and growing in this life. Yes. If it's comfort or if it's discomfort. Whatever it takes, you must signal your willingness for these things. Is that uh, 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 any more? Thank you. Holy fire, fall upon our altar. All right. Holy fire, fall upon my altar. From within, spirit, please take over. Holy fire, fall upon my altar. Can we sing it out? Holy fire, fall upon my altar. From within, from within, the spirit will take over. Holy fire, fall upon Shall will be done, O Lord. Holy fire, burn upon my Lord. Holy fire, burn upon my heart. Holy fire, burn upon my Lord. Holy fire, burn upon my heart. Holy fire, burn upon my heart. Jesus. 
Can we, can we be on our feet and uh, can we just lift up our hands to our Father as a symbol of, uh, of surrender and uh, unwillingness? We are ready to learn this part. It's easy to go to war, look at the hazard of war, but Saul could not obey. He said, Don't spare anything in that battle. They went under the anointing. There is nothing like partial obedience. He went. But he could not complete obedience. He said he spared Agag. And, uh, is it Agag and the rest? Yes. Ananias and Sapphira, did they obey? Yes. But there is nothing like partial obedience. They were taught in that journey of obedience, but they could not complete it. They sold their land. Israel don't sell their land. So they did that first part to sell it. But they couldn't drop it. You couldn't drop it. Forgetfulness is not an excuse. In the days of David, they carried the ark. But they forgot the instruction. That the ark must be carried upon the shoulders. Their motives was clear, pure. It's not about how pure is your motive. Instructions must be obeyed. It's the most I say, this is the way, this is the pathway, this is the pattern. Thank you. Thank you. And the Uzzah died. They went back to obey the original instruction. He said, when you carry my this, you put it where? On the, they made a new cut. It was new. There is no substitute for obedience in God. If you say, don't eat that tree, don't eat it. Don't even rub it on your mouth. If you don't want water to touch you, why will you go to the edge of the river? Spoil your root. We must never tempt the devil to tempt us. You see, flee all appearance. Not the thing, no. If you appear like it, if you are not sure, you see, flee. You see, flee all what? Appearance. If it appears, if it looks like it, okay, you are not sure, okay, it's not. No, no, no. The base, say flee. You say, leave it. Our oh, Father, we thank you. Thank you. This our most significant call. The call of obedience. This life, this beautiful rose flower in the spirit realm. With the best fragrance. All that Jesus did on earth, your son did on earth, you obey. What to obey you? That us to walk in obedience, this life of obedience. This sweet smelling savour, the sacrifice of, ob- of obedience. Let our whole life become an altar of obedience. So you present your body as a living what? What is inside that scripture? It's obedience. It's a living what? Sacrifice. Father, thank you. Thank you for we receive strength anew. We receive the impartation of life anew, and we receive the impartation of your spirit. And you will receive strengthening on this path in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Let the consciousness of obedience be raising us to a new high. Amen. To a new level in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Blessed be your name. And we pray for your house. Pray for the body of Christ. We pray for our brothers and our sisters all across the earth that even this will be whatever you are doing in us today you are doing here will be done across the whole earth in the name of Jesus Amen. men will begin to love to obey you Amen. there will be a new hunger and thirst for obedience Amen. they just want to obey God thank you thank you blessed be your name of Father thank you Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen.